Dr. Romano, Dr. Romano, I'm glad I found you. My right. head is spinning. Do you know anything about the degree of unsaturation? Anything? You're the only one who can help. Let me go over a few things on the degree of unsaturation. This is a very confusing topic to a lot of students, and I want to show you what we can do with it. Um, I know in the Klein book, they give you a formula. They give you a, a formula in the carry book. One word for the formula, bullshit. So why don't we just go over the way I'm going to show you, and you'll kill it. My professor was nominated for the 1969 Nobel Prize in Theoretical Organic Chemistry. Let me show you the way you, the great Johann Schultz from Germany showed me. Um, I was trained by one of the last of the great German organic chemists. I'll show you the way we do it, and we don't new, use any silly formula. You've got a million formulas to think about. Why are you going to even entertain the possibility of a formula? So come around. Okay, Dr. Go Romano, Johann Schultz, a Dr. Schultz. I've heard of him. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to do four examples. In the first example, I want to calculate what's called the degree of unsaturation. I give you C5H8. So the first thing you do is you write it down, C5H8. Underneath it, you write the alkane. Now, the alkane of C5, if you remember, an alkane is double the number of carbons plus two. So a C5 becomes an H12. All you do is you subtract the difference of H's. So 12 minus 8 gives me 4, and then all you do is cut it in half. And that gives you the degree of unsaturation. So one more time, take the original. Underneath it, write the nearest alkane. And when I did that, which is double plus two, you subtract the difference of H's and cut it in half. Problem number two, if any compound contains an oxygen, the rule is ignore the oxygen. So you're going to look at C6H12O2 and just think of it as a C6H12. Underneath is the nearest alkane of c 6 h 14, remember, you double plus 2, subtract the difference, 14 minus 12 is 2, cut it in half, and you get a 1. What if there's a halogen present? If there's a halogen present, count the halogen as if it was an H. So you're going to look to this as C10H12, because 10 and 2 is 12. So you're going to think of it as a C10H12, underneath it, is C10H22, that's the nearest alkane, subtract the difference and cut it in half. We get five. Final case, what if there's a nitrogen? If there's a nitrogen present, you're going to subtract one hydrogen for every nitrogen. So C5H7N, you're going to think of it as a C5H6. Underneath is the nearest alkane, C5H12, subtract, you get 6, and cut it in half. Let's do one together. What if I gave you C4H8O2Br2? Now, if I gave you something like this, and then we'll even throw an N2. Got it. First of all, um, oxygen do nothing. Do nothing for oxygen. If you have Br2, means you would add 2, this would make it a 10, and then this would subtract 2. So that would be the same as a C4H8. One more time. Do nothing with the oxygen. Okay. Bromine, add 2 H's, that brings this up to a 10. Subtract 2 H's, brings it back to an 8. So underneath, you get a c 4 H10 for the nearest alkane, subtract, and as you can see, you get a 1. Now, what does this mean? If you have a degree of unsaturation of 0, 0 means that there's going to be no double bonds present, no triple bonds present, and no rings present. It would only be single bonds. If the degree of unsaturation is 1, that means the compound could contain a double bond or it could contain a ring. If the degree of unsaturation is 2, well, it could mean it could be two double bonds, two rings, one double and one ring, or a triple bond. So a triple bond gives two degrees of unsaturation, a, single, a double bond 
or a ring gives one degree of unsaturation. Let me just show you what we could do with this, just so you get an idea. The first thing, and I don't see this in any of the textbooks, say someone wants to draw isomers of C5H10O. The first thing I would do is to calculate the degree of unsaturation. So what I would do is go like this, and when I subtract, um, I get two, cut it in half, I get one. So that means that this molecule could contain one double bond, one ring. So what I can do is let's just try just drawing a few of them. I could put a double bond. There's my five carbons. I could put a double bond here, and that makes an aldehyde. And if you just want to quickly check it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you got your ten eight your ten H's. Or I could then move it over. The double bond can be moved over like this. Or I can place the double bond somewhere like this. Or who's to say there must be all carbons? I could have some in, in a straight line. I could break it up with an O. Or instead of that, what if I did something like this? How exotic. And as you can oh. see, I made a ring. One, two, three, four, five. And there's my O. Or I could do something like this. Like that, there's five, and I could put an O anywhere my heart desires. Wow. As you can see, I can go here and here, and I can go here. I can go all day. And as you guys can see, we can write many, many isomers. How many isomers there are? There's no way I can tell until I exhaust all the possibilities. So you're not going to be asked that question on the dot, how many. But as you can see, that's the trick or the gimmick on how to write isomers. Um, one of my students many years ago, I'll never forget him, um, he wrote 125 isomers in homework. That's the record I've ever seen of any student by using this technique. So as you can see, if you ever wanted to find out the exact number of constitutional isomers, that's impossible because you need a computer program. But if you want to draw several of them and get a good start, you always do the degree of unsaturation, and that tells you what exactly is there. The greater the degree of unsaturation, obviously, the more potential um, types of constitutional isomers that you have. I hope that helps. For the DAT exam, I would anticipate a question. They would ask you, what is the degree of unsaturation of this compound? And you should be able to use this technique and answer it. You have enough things to worry about memorizing silly formulas. Doing it for the degree of unsaturation is now one of them. All right, I hope that helps. Thank you, Dr. Mono. Guess what? I'm going to do 130. I'm going to beat your top student. Does that mean I'll get a 30 on the day? Well, we'll see about that. He went off to Harvard, and he's a PhD in organic chemistry now, so that's a tall order, but we'll see. I wish you a good day. Okay, Dr. Romano, thank you. Wow. Whoa. Good day to you, sir. Good day.